Welcome back everybody to another Nano Refreak video. Today we're talking about the S-Chef's Deskmate Florida and installing an auto top off unit. This auto top off unit is from Neptune. It's a really old model. And when I mean old, I mean like this thing is probably a decade old. Everything still works though, or at least everything should still work. We'll find out in this video. So why an auto top off? An auto top off unit is gonna help keep your salinity in check. It's already happened to me on this aquarium being only nine gallons. A nano tank like this is gonna fluctuate in salinity like that. Your salinity needs to be 1.025 specific gravity or about 35 PPT, which is part per trillion. With your salinity, topping off with RODI water is all it takes to have your salinity drop or forgetting for a couple days to fill your tank up is all it takes for your salinity to go up through the roof. In a tank this small, changing salinity can be detrimental to your reef life. In my specific instance, the tank was mixed at around 1.025. So as soon as it started evaporating, it went up to 1.027 real quick. Another thing you might not be thinking about with salinity is all the ingredients in your salt water. So your magnesium, your calcium, your alkalinity, all those things are changing as your salinity gets higher. The concentration of those elements in your water is increasing as water evaporates and the salt is left behind. An auto top off unit is gonna help stabilize not only your salinity, but all the concentrations of the ingredients of your water. So your magnesium, your calcium, your alkalinity, all those are gonna stay more stable in your tank it's gonna help you keep things like SPS corals. It's gonna help you keep your more temperamental, cor temperamental corals. It's also gonna help corals that you know maybe didn't do as well from the transition of being shipped to the fish store, being quarantined at the fish store, living in the fish store for a couple of days under a light that they've never had before because maybe they were from the ocean or from some other coral farm or mariculture or something like that, right? And then they're getting put in a bag again, getting brought home to your aquarium, getting acclimated, hopefully properly, getting probably uh, dipped, you know, all those things a coral goes through and then it gets to your tank and the last thing that we can do for the coral is to give it a stable environment. That's all the coral is asking for. It's one simple request and an ATO is one of the number one components of that stable reef tank. Outside of an ATO, obviously, we're gonna need a light. We're gonna get that on there pretty soon. We maybe even might change this lid. We might go with another PlexiFlow lid, which would be great. Those are polycarbonate lids if you haven't seen my previous video. Some other considerations for this tank could be a heater, depending on where you live. I'm in Florida, so I am literally sweating in my house with the AC on, which is fantastic. So no heater for me, but the reef tank in the winter could maybe need a heater. So, I mean, we'll have to look into it because I am a really big fan of opening my window in the winter and letting all that cool air in because we only get a couple of those days a year in Florida. So I'll have to evaluate if a heater will be worth it during that time. As for auto top offs, you should choose. Some well-known brands out there are Toonzy with their auto top off unit. There's also a bunch of other ones like the Neptune one I have here, which is owned by Bulk Reef Supply now. And there's even more than that. Red Sea has one that's pretty up there, but I think the Red Sea one even has some unique features like temperature monitoring as part of the auto top off unit system itself. So that's kind of cool. Keep an eye out for those new features in your auto top off units. Primary features that I look for are obviously a sensor to stop the water, hopefully more than one. If you have two sensors, that's really, really good. If you have three, even better. So what some auto top off units do, they have a third sensor that's attached to the pump in the reservoir. So when the reservoir empties, the pump no longer turns on. But newer pumps nowadays uh, can realize that. If you have like a DC return pump for your auto top off unit, it will not uh, dry run. Some other good features are the intelligence of the auto top off unit. So intelligence as far as if it fills up, does it have an algorithm? Like, hey, I filled up three times in a row each were one minute long, the tank should be full normally by now. It's not, let's stop and make an alert, like a beep sound or something. And that brings me to my next thing, other than algorithms, having some kind of audible alarm is really helpful. Having maybe something that connects to an app that can give you a notification if something critical happens. And uh, if the auto top off unit has any kind of like health sensor, like if it, if it has a sensor to determine like, hey, you know, this probe may be malfunctioning or maybe getting old, something like that would be really great to see. As for which auto top off unit to buy, I'm not here to sell you guys anything. I'm not here to promote this Neptune one is just literally what I had on hand back in the day. This was the best at the time, but that was again, like a decade ago. Ultimately, the auto top off unit you all should buy should be based on your own research. Take all the points I mentioned today, go do some research and pick out an auto top off unit that you like and comment below which auto top off unit you chose 
so that future viewers of this video can look through the comments and see some recommendations there and investigate those products as well. As for me, let's go ahead and get this auto top off unit installed on this aquarium. It does come with the RO tubing that takes the water from the reservoir to the aquarium. The RO tubing does have a little feature here where there's a little hole in this so that when this stops pumping water up to your tank, this will actually break the siphon in this little tube, the little hole here. I have had this siphon the water out of my tank before, so my official recommendation, never put uh, the end of this tube in your aquarium. You always wanna have like a little holder that keeps this out of your aquarium water just above the water line, but it is nice to have a little feature. So keep a lookout for that feature if you buy an auto top off unit from anybody. Some other features of this unit are these sensors. You'll notice that this comes with two sensors. So these two sensors are zip tied together. I did have them kind of like hanging in the aquarium where the bottom one would just kind of fill up right in between here. Uh, and ultimately this one sensor failed. So you can see right here, one sensor is darker than the other. Looks like it just got burnt out because I have cleaned these and there is no algae on them. So we do have a new sensor to put in here and we'll be installing that on the FMM module today. So the challenge with this auto top off unit and these little sensors is holding the sensors in the aquarium. We did 3D print a little TPU holder for the sensor. So effectively you'll take your sensor here and you'll just slide it into the clip here and then tighten this little screw because the clip uh, does not actually like hold it, hold it. It just kind of aligns it. And then that screw actually holds it on there really tightly. So this will have uh, two separating magnets here and we'll hold it in the aquarium and it will just be like that. So we will have that uh, sensor in the back. Now the Neptune does automatically turn off if it uh, fills up three times in a row and still detects that it needs more water or if it fills up for more than I think, like five minutes at a time or something, or if this sensor falls off and falls in the water and constantly detects that it's full, it's not going to completely, you know, continue the top off because it thinks it's full. So we're gonna put this on the top and then we do have a holder for the bottom. So this is just the one that it comes with and we'll separate those two. And uh, with the flush cutters, you just wanna be really careful not to cut any of these cables. What I would recommend, if you ever do zip tie your aquariums, don't use black zip ties, although they, lo they look really nice. It's really hard to see the, where the black zip tie is and where the wire is, uh, especially when there's some algae and crud on these in the future. So I believe this is the bad sensor. So we're gonna separate this one. I wanna say it was sensor number two that was bad. Well, this is sensor number one, so we'll see. We'll have to test it. Let's go ahead and test if these probes still work. Alrighty, I am not 100% certain that this uh, FMM module here is working with the Neptune ATK. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can figure this out. So here is our measuring cup. In theory, one sensor should be at the bottom and one sensor should be at the top. So this is sensor number two here. I'm gonna go get sensor number one. So here is sensor number one. All right, so we've got sensor number one, sensor number two. How this should work, I've heard two claims. There should be the sensors like very close to each other. And some people say that the lower one, when it when water passes it, it fills up to the second one. And then when the lower one gets exposed again, it fills up to the second one. And then if the second one goes underwater and remains underwater, it will then turn off the ATO. Other people say that it goes below the lower one, fills up to the lower one and stops, goes below the lower one, fills up to the lower one and stops. And then if it ever hits the second one, it just turns off. I'm not sure which one's entirely correct. So we're gonna go and figure this out. Um, let's see. So number two should always be the higher sensor. So we will plug that up there. And number one should always be the lower sensor. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So. We've got sensor number one and two. So this should turn on and detect that sensor number one is out of water. And then it should fill up till sensor number two, I think gets hit, we'll find out. So what I have to do, I have to plug in the Neptune system. I have to use an Allen key. There's a little hole here. We're gonna push this in there. This is gonna start blinking orange, got it. We're gonna unplug this for one, two, three and plug it back in. Now it's reset and it can fill. It only fills up once per hour, so you have to reset it every time it stops filling, and then that way it will start filling again. Okay, it's on, so let's see. Uh, does it stop at sensor number one or sensor number two? So there's sensor number one is covered. Looks like it's going all the way up. Oh, okay. So it stopped, alrighty. So now what we'll do, we'll pour some of this water out and see what it 
how it handles that. I'm just curious. So now the water has been poured out. In theory, it should not come back on because it's already turned on once within this hour. It only turns on once an hour. Hey Siri, set a 58 minute timer. 58 minutes starting now. So now it shouldn't come back on until 58 minutes from now, so we'll see. False alarm, it came back on and filled back up already. Uh, literally, it's been two minutes since I recorded the last clip. So it fills up and covers sensor number one. So it does appear that the correct way that this system works is that when sensor number one gets uncovered, it will then fill the water back up above sensor number one. So it's ideally in between these two sensors. And then sensor number two acts like an overflow. So if the water hits sensor number two for more than uh, I believe it's like 10 seconds or 15 seconds, it will then uh, beep and tell you that it is disabled. So we can replicate that. We'll get some water and dump it in there and see uh, how it handles it. So let's take some water, not drip it on our electronics here. So now we've got both sensors covered. We're simulating as if the tank has uh, been overfilled by the Neptune ATK. So we're gonna see how it handles uh, being overfilled there potentially. First, we're gonna go ahead and take our top sensor. We're gonna put it in the third chamber all the way in the back where the pump is, because that is a chamber that's gonna fluctuate. Alrighty, we'll go ahead and get the second sensor installed in there. This is the new one. I may actually even print another one of my sensor holders because you see how it's squared off in the back? It being squared off in the back allows us to keep the sensor horizontal like that, whereas the one it comes with is way down there and it keeps like tilting the sensor all around and spinning it. So. I think I like mine better actually. We did go ahead and print this little doodad right here. It's going to sit on the side of the tank and hold our RODI tubing. It just has a little hole in the end there and then that way the RODI tube can go through that. Okay, now let's plug in the Neptune ATK. All right, everybody, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see down there the pump is really low on water. It's so low on water that there's some bubbles kicking up. You can see we've got our first optical sensor there, and then our second optical sensor is way up here, right there, right in front of the camera. We've got our auto top off return line right here, which is just clipped onto the side of the aquarium. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn this uh, ATK on and see how it does. Alrighty, so it looks like the auto top off unit did really good. You can see that the aquarium is actually uh, halfway full on the water line in there. And that means that the water can uh, overflow in the here and the pump won't run dry down there. And the second sensor is up here as a fail safe. So ideally the first sensor will not fail, but if it does, the second sensor is there and the uh, tube is securely attached right there. I mean, that is not going anywhere. So. We should be all set with our auto top-off unit, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.